What's up, it's Mr. White. It's time for unit two, and if I'm looking out there at you, I think you procrastinated and you didn't do enough studying all year long. So let's do this very quickly. I picked three very important topics for unit two in AP Human Geography. The first one we're gonna look at is population, then the most important demographic transition model, and then finally, um, natalist policies. Let's get going. Population, you should know that where people live versus the, the, the geography and the climate are very intricately linked. So we have these two maps. I couldn't overlay them because, right, I'm not, I'm not that good. But we can see that most people live above the equator. A lot of these people, they live uh, near water and coast. And they tend to avoid these like hot, dry areas or these super wet and hot, dangerous areas with snakes. So if we can, we can find a correlation. Here's the Amazon rainforest here. Rainforest sounds scary. I, all I can think of is spiders, snakes, heat, sweat, right? Oh, no one lives there. Wonderful place. Moderate, mild climates in these areas just above the tropics. That's where everyone's living. Going down here, the Alp Alpac. Hey, how you doing? Right? Oh, no one lives there. So there's a strong correlation. People like to live in a moderate area with arable land so they can farm. Uh, they like to avoid the extremes. Deserts, mountains tundras, taigas, um, rainforest, because they want a nice, moderate life. They don't want it too hot. They don't want it too cold. It's kind of like Goldilocks. All right, and that is where people choose to live, so population at its heart. All right, now the most important thing, if you're in my class, you already know that I've already hit you with this, but I'm going to hit you all with it because you're on YouTube, and I love you all too. So Countries and people experience this shift and this transition from a like a nascent stage to a highly developed right ending stage. And it can be categorized as stage one through five. So we have three things at play here. We have the total population, we have birth and death rates. So we can see here in a stage one place, this would be like a rainforest, uh, some remote village out in the middle of nowhere. They're going to have extremely high birth rates and death rates because they have... Um, very, very little resources in medicine. They have little knowledge and education. Um, they might struggle to produce food. So they're going to have a high birth rate, but they're also going to have a high death rate. And because of that, there's a low growth. Stage two. In this stage, we now have some countries that exhibit this. You'll have still that high birth rate due to the the decreased uh, value uh, of women, but you'll see there's a lower death rate. The lowering death rate... And what happens here is there's there's a little bit more availability to food back here. There might be more more apt to you know famine, and because of this disparity between the birth and death rates falling so much in the stage two country, we can see it would look like this on a population pyramid. So South Sudan, one of the newer countries in the world, definitely exhibits this: uh, a large amount of kids and a very low amount of um, of of elderly people. So. Less people are dying of starvation, but there's still that threat of disease. Now let's move into the next stage, stage three. In this stage, we can see that uh, the death rate is still slowly going down, but the biggest change would be the birth rates. And mostly because in a stage three country, women go from things that give birth to valued members of society. They're able to hold jobs. And because of that, they give birth less and there's better medicine, there's better health care, and because of that, the birth rates are falling, the CDR is also starting to level out, and they're getting closer and closer, so we'll see a slower growth, it would look like this, um, it's kind of like a, I don't know, looks kind of like an, an upside down onion, or upside down heart a little bit, and this is what a, this is a snapshot, these population pyramids are snapshots of the demographic transition model. Stage four, all of a sudden you have, towards the end of it, stable population no more growth um what's happened now is the the birth rate is at its lowest the death rate is at its lowest death rate can never be at zero because people unfortunately do have to pass away at some point but because of healthcare, they can live longer which is awesome and in this scenario in a stage four country like portugal you can see that um the population and the birth and death rate have, have started to equalize. And this is mostly due to the fact that women are even still more career oriented. They're having less kids. So they're having the most kids up here, even less kids down here. All right. And stage five, 
In a stage 5 country, there's very few of these in the world. Some would be like Japan, Denmark, Northern Europe, G Germany. And this is when there is actually negative growth. So we can see all through this, there's been some sort of positive growth, whether it's slow, exponential, linear. And now we have a negative growth because people are so focused on careers and they're you know buying themselves stuff that they do not actually need that many children to go out and farm they're working on computers so things like that the demographic transition model can be attributed to many things it's very very important and please make sure you understand all the intricacies of it looking at these population pyramids in each stage last thing we're looking at is natalist policies here is a map of the birth rates of the world by country so find your country look at that color there's two camps here natalist means birth policies that's all it means birth there's pronatalist and there's antinatalist so a pronatalist country would want people to have more kids so these would be places where maybe they're back here in stage five or late stage four and they're worried oh our population's getting smaller Antinatalists have the opposite problem. They're like, oh my gosh, we have so many people. We don't even know what to do. We need people to stop having kids. How can we make them stop having kids? Now, you got to think from a governmental standpoint, they want people to have less kids because more people means more policing, more laws, more problems, just more people. It's more difficult to, to take care of, control, and find them. So let's look at some of these antinatalist and pronatalist policies. So pronatalists, they want them to encourage higher birth rates. Antinatalists, dissuade birth rates, lower them. Two of the best places to go for antinatalist policies are China and India. One, they're the two most populated countries in the world. And two, they have pretty prominent policies. In China, we always know from the late 70s up until just recently, there was that one child policy where if a family went over one child, um, they would be uh, they'd be punished, there'd be some sort of tax-laden um, laden policy on them. India was also giving away cars and all these products to have people get less children because both of these countries have over 1.5 million people. These are the two most populated countries in the world. India is set to be the most populated by 2050, and more people means more problems. So the government is doing what they can to try to decrease the amount of children. China's one-child policy works. It's now known as a two-child policy. Let's look on the other side of the coin, pronatalist. So we're now, what we're going to look for here is this very light purple. We can see Japan and Denmark we're going to look at. Now, Japan is one of the most developed countries in the world, but they have one of the lowest birth rates. And they're actually, looking at this population pyramid, going to be an extinct country in 100 years if they do not change their current population policies. So Japan will actually offer people thousands of dollars yearly to just have more kids uh and denmark took a very interesting approach they ran a campaign called do it for denmark and i don't speak danish but this is something about you need to have more kids because uh if we don't then our populations will go away but just take note here kind of the places in the north of the equator have lower birth rates places around the equator have higher birth rates the highest birth rates are found in west africa sub-saharan africa some parts of the middle east here and those are natalist policies those three topics will guarantee you a three four or five when we turn that college board on their head and we destroy them all right in may all right mr white is out